And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today we're taking a look at a game called End of Atlantis. Atlantis is about to be destroyed and you'd like to get people off of it. Of course, this being a board game, you'd prefer to get more of your people off than everybody else. This is a game of auctioning and, well, special powers, but lots of auctioning. Let's take a look. Here's the board, which is nice and round, has a score track going around the outside. And really, the board has some really nice artwork. You can see here all the people. There's where they're going to get on ships and go over here to the fabled new land before Atlantis sinks. Other people are going to are here in the Senate, and this is actually where the game is going to begin. See, each player has 20 cubes of their colors. These cubes are going to be used for voting, and they're also going to be used as people who make it to the new world. Each player will have a shield, which they will be able to hide their cubes behind during the course of the game. At the beginning of each round, players are going to bid uh, closed fist as many of these people as you want. You can bid as few as you want. And then the people who they bid are placed here. And this will determine ties. If there's ever a tie for the rest of that round, let's say yellow, who didn't put any cubes in, is tied with blue. Blue wins the tie. If blue and green are tied, blue wins the tie. If green and purple are tied, etc. Also, whoever puts the most cubes in here is going to get to determine their turn order first. Uh, the turn order and is going to be them picking one of these guys here. Whichever one they pick, they're also going to take that person. And each of these people that they take has a special ability. We'll come back to that. Players will have a handful of seven politic cards. And they're going to pick five of these cards and put them down without anybody else seeing what they've put down. And then you flip them all over at the same time. Then everyone is going to do five auctions. The first auction will be for everyone's first card, and whoever wins that auction will get to play their card, and second place will get to play their card. First place can also play their card or the person to the left of them their card. So you have a couple options of which card you're going to play. The auctions are either going to be closed auctions, just like the voting, or open auctions where people go around the table and keep voting until someone eventually wins. Many of the cards, when you win them, will allow you to put different refugees, as long as you have them, don't waste all your guys on the auctions, into different boats. And so players are going to want to do that. Other auctions are going to let people launch the boats and move the boats out into the water. Each turn, three of the boats are going to move automatically. And so there's basically three spots. A boat could be here, have people put on it. A boat's in the water, no one can be put on it. And then a boat will land here. And when a boat lands there, we add the refugees to the other side, and players will get points for a few things, for how many different colors were on the ship, how many of your own color was on the ship, and sometimes some of the cards will allow you to uh, get extra points. So the different cards, for example, you can see this card right here allows you to put two people on one ship. This card lets you put one person on a ship. This card lets you put someone on a ship even if the ship is full. If it's full, you kick someone else out. This puts someone on a ship and get a victory point. Put someone on a ship and move a ship. Move two ships, one. Move a ship, and if that ship gets to the shore, you get extra points. Destroy a ship at sea. Draw some special cards, and uh, there's a whole pile, uh, an extra deck of special cards, which you can play at different times that will let you do special actions. You know, here's like put an extra spot on the ship where you can put somebody on that ship. Or some of the cards are just kept to the end of the game as extra points. Or you can block somebody when they play something like destroy a ship. As the game progresses, some of the ships are also going to be flipped over and upgraded. And the different ships have different abilities. Like one ship is totally immune to the enemy attacks. Another ship, this one here, when it upgrades, basically whenever it moves, it automatically makes it to the enemy I mean, to the safety of the shore. So there's special abilities there. Now over here on the side, you'll notice there was a little spot for cards. One of these cards here is going to be used each turn. And this card will have a special effect that's an ability. It shows you how many neutral ships come out. It shows you what kind of bidding will be done that round. And some of them show these fireballs. And when these happen, you will place one of these three portents of doom onto 
the pillars over here, and when the third one shows up, the game is over. So the game is not necessarily going to be three rounds. Each, one, each round you'll see, basically, this will be the final round. So a game will last probably three to six rounds. After three to six rounds, there's a few more final points um, that players will get, and whoever has most points wins. Remember, um, also, uh, at the end of each round, whoever has most people here will get points, whoever has most people here will get points, and then also players will reveal their special cards and see how many points they got. But most points will be gotten from players landing ships over there. And don't forget, I also mentioned whoever, you'll have these that you'll be able to use each round. This one over here is usually the weakest, which is uh, basically get rid of five cards and draw five more, all the way up to this person who can pick one of their cards and use it. As long as you didn't vote on it at all, you can use it even if you were outvoted that round. So there's all sorts of different special abilities that players will be able to have. Most points is the winner. Production is very good in this game. I would have preferred something other than cubes, but I guess since you're using them as voting and as people getting on the boats, it is a kind of a good generic piece, but the artwork is stunning. The cards are good. The box is good. The quality is good. The round board looks nice. The pieces come across well. The gameplay itself plays well. Um, I think people's enjoyment of the game is going to come down to how much do you like auctions because you do them a lot. And this is probably one of the problems I have with the game is that that you're constantly auctioning. It's, there are five auctions, as well, six auctions every turn. There's one for the Senate, then there's five more auctions. So there's six auctions every turn, and that's all you basically do. You auction, 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 and then you take the actions, you pick the, I mean, there's other things going on. But the game is sent around those auctions, and sometimes it's too much of the same thing. Over and over and over and over, 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 over again, over and over and over again. Now, that being said, I thought it was a pretty cool idea. There's a, a lot of interactiveness here, really. I mean, you can blow people's ships up, but that often can tend to the game dragging a bit as you look. Let's say you're playing a four-player game. Uh, you can play five-player, but let's say you're playing four-player, and you're looking at the other three players and seeing what cards they picked. So you're thinking, okay, I need to win this auction, please, because you want to win the auction so you can use your card, but also so that other people can't use theirs. And two people are going to win, and so you're thinking carefully about how each auction is going to work, and you do that five times in a row. And then when you do it, you're like, okay, I can move two ships. Which ships am I going to move? Where am I going to put my people? And the game, uh, the, the, the box of the game, I don't know if it says a time on here somewhere. Uh, yeah, 60 to 90 minutes. No way 60 minutes. Unless you're playing with people who just don't care. Uh, it's going to take closer to two hours, maybe even a little bit longer than that. And that all depends on these cards. Uh, there's a, a kind of a variable number of rounds. I would actually throw that variable out and just play with a straight three or four rounds. Because otherwise, I think the game is just a little too long for what it does. Now, it sounds like I'm being negative about the game, and I don't mean to be. I do think it's neat. I like how the ships upgrade and change into better versions and have special abilities. I like the idea of picking a weaker special ability to go first, or a really good special ability, but you go last. I like the idea of, you know, some subterfuge, you know, kill people uh, on the ships and put your own guy in their place, trying to figure out which ships, joining other people in the ships so you both get points. That's all well and good. So I will give this game a good recommendation, but if you don't like auctions, then don't, no, no, because they're such a focal point of the game. Even if you're kind of mediocre in auctions, I think you should avoid this because it's something I think you need to like, especially since many of the auctions are blind bidding and a lot of people dislike that method. So I don't think this is great, but I think it's good solid design with excellent components and it certainly does uh, do some unique things that I haven't seen before. That's End of Atlantis. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door. Yeah. Yeah.